most research would focus on what are the reasons that would lead people to take up arms. An equally important question is why would people decide not to take up arms even if they come, even if they will experience uh, traumas or repression. I think this is a very important question. If you look at the cases of Egypt and Tunisia, you would see that only a very small minority decided to take up arms, while the majority of Islamists, they are still uh, they still believe in non-violent uh, activism. If you look at the case of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, for example, uh, there are three, three main factors that led the Brotherhood not to take up arms. First is the position of the leadership. So the MB leadership decided not to follow the violent path. They asked all their members not to do it. And even they fired those who decided to uh, join the groups. The second factor is the draft analysis. At the end of the day, Taking up arms is also kind of a rational decision. So people, many people think that the cost of taking up arms is very high. You might lose your life, you might be jailed for years, while the benefit is not there. It's practically impossible to uh, win a military battle against the Egyptian security. And third, ideology. I think ideolo ideology also matters. Uh, unlike Salafi Jihadism, the ideology of the Muslim Brotherhood doesn't include the idea of takfir or excommunication, meaning that they don't excommunicate members of the security forces or uh, other members of state institutions. And that makes it very difficult for people to accept the use of violence. So I would encourage everyone to follow the Ulistico uh, channels, the publications on Twitter, Facebook, uh, and our website.